So today we're going to talk about operating in the light. Now, when you operate in the light, I, I just want to tell you that the reason that you operate in the light is to avoid and eliminate all darkness. So for me to operate in the light means that there has to be, the reason that light is there is for me to, first of all, avoid any darkness that could be before me. But secondly, when I recognize it in my own life, to get rid of it. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Do you know that if, if you, you can't find good, and I know that even when you're a young man or a young woman, um, even as you grow up sometimes, the enemy wants to tell you that you can find good out in worldly places. Like your friends are in the world. Your friends are out in the club. Your friends are out. Listen, truth be known is that there's trouble in the clubs. There's darkness out there. And you can go out there and, and see what kind of light you can find. But more likely, the attraction of the darkness will be greater than to the light. Because nobody goes to the club in the middle of the day. They go to the club at 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning. And then stuff happens. And good, bad stuff can happen to good people if you're in a bad spot. So let's look at our prophetic word getting started today. Where we, we read this first portion of it. The transformation of your present self is in entering into the destiny which lies before you. Hunger for a new and more glorious you which is found only in Christ Jesus through deepening intimacy. Now when, when, I, when I think about the transformation of myself, it begins with my desire for transformation. I have to hunger for a new me. I, I have to hunger that when I exit 2021, December 31st, that I'm going to be a different man than I am presently. But to know that my transformation is not found in natural things, my transformation is going to be found only in my pursuit of Christ. It's through deepening my intimacy for Him. And that's why we can say, that this year should be about operating in the light. And the more we operate in the light, then the more we'll avoid darkness. The more we operate in the light, we should hate the evil that's within us. Proverbs 25, verses 4 through 5. The Bible says, Take away the waste from silver, and the vessel will come out for the silver worker. So you have a picture of a worker of silver, but there's a demand on someone to take the waste from the silver so that the silver now presented with no waste can come before the silver maker. But somebody has to be willing to deal with the waste. You know, and for my life, for most of my life, I have looked at repentance as being something negative because I've looked at it from a position that I'm repenting of sin, I'm, I'm dealing with something that holds me back, and it's been a negative observation from myself. In this stage of my life, I look at it as an invitation for transformation with no, like, no harshness. I've never, I've never experienced God being harsh to me in his corrections. Never. So his corrections are always leading me out of the darkness and into a level of maturity. And he says, so if you will accept my invitation for transformation, take away the waste, and what will be presented before the silver worker is finer silver. So he says in verse 5, take away evildoers from before the king... And the seat of his power will be made strong in righteousness. So the ultimate goal, I believe, here is that every one of us remain strong or even become stronger in our position of righteousness. Right standing with God with the ability to now distribute that rightness to others. So he says, "Just this is how you got to do it. Take away the evil doers before you. So first of all, I started, deal with yourself. 
what's going on on the inside and deal with going on on the outside. I don't know, and I won't even point at or talk about friends that are in our life, but let's just talk about other things because you know whether or not you have healthy friends or you don't. But here's the thing that we should all be in, knowing that we should separate. Beware of what you celebrate on your TV. Take away the evil that you put before you, then the seed of your power will be established in strong righteousness. You have to be aware of what you put in your eye gates. You say, Pastor, why are we dealing with this? Because we want to be established in strong righteousness and with the outcome to be glorious. So here's the point. If you purge corruption from within, your outcome will be established in righteousness. I read this yesterday, and it takes courage. But here's what the psalmist writes. He says, I lay out all of the pieces of my life and I place them on your altar. And you would think that that is tough. Because that means now there's some form of examination. I'm examining my life. I put everything that I have on the inside of me and I lay it out on the altar. And we're waiting for judgment. But what the psalmist writes is when I lay my life out in pieces before God on the altar, he says he waits for the fire of God to consume his heart. Now, that is being established in righteousness when God consumes my heart. But what started the process of that consumption is me being willing and courageous enough to say, here I am. Make me who I need to be. Create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. Help me rediscover my first passion and love I once had for you, where it didn't matter what time of the morning it was, when you called, I got out of bed. When you said, write this down, I used to write it down. When you told me things to do, I would just jump at it because it was you, Master, and it was me. And now we've gone down the road a little bit, and it's like, oh, I'll get it in the morning. And then you realize you don't remember in the morning what he told you because it's not valuable to you, so you miss it. How about if we just go back a little bit and rediscover what we used to do? So I want to make this point to you. Operating in the light is when wisdom, God's wisdom, pours into you, but it pours into you as you hate every form of evil in your life. You see, ultimately, that's what worship and fearing God is all about, hating the evil within. You know, it's, 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 we, we call it easy to hate the evil without. But what about the evil that's in me that I justify? Why do I justify my anger? Why do I justify my fear? Why do I justify my lust? Why do I justify my faults and failures because of what I've been through, the hurts and the disappointments of my life? I justify the darkness in my life instead of saying, Father, I don't want it no more. And now I wait for your fire to consume my heart. But if you're looking for the wisdom of God, it's going to begin with his outpouring when you hate every form of evil in you. That's a place that we all need to discover. And I'm not telling you that we haven't. I'm just asking you perhaps think about reawakening that. That I'm going to begin this year making a decree to myself. I will work on intensifying hate of the evil that's within me. Now we know we're commanded not to hate, but you can hate the evil that's in you. That's the only way you're going to get rid of it. Because if you don't hate it, you're going to pat it on the back and stroke it, put it off on the shelf, and whenever you want to, you can pull it off. Let me pull that off and put it back on you. So Proverbs 9, verses 4 through 6 says this. Whoever wants to know me and receive my wisdom, come and dine at my table. And drink of my wine. Lay aside your simple thoughts and leave your paths behind. Agree with my ways. Live in my truth and righteousness you will find. 
So you see, the transformation is making a decision that i got to leave some silly things behind. Now listen, I want to make sure that you know, I know, you're more mature in Christ than you've ever been before in your life. You've come further in your walk with Jesus than you ever have before, but it's not enough. How many of you agree you have made progress? Of course we all have. That's why we're here. But it's not enough. The journey's not over. Just because you're born again... Filled with the Holy Ghost and power that you read the word, study the word, doesn't mean that you don't have to continue to work on deepening your intimacy with Jesus. You know, some of you may not even know what that means. But I want to tell you something. You know where you begin at? Just tell the Lord the truth. I don't know what deepening intimacy means with you. Can you teach me? He's a loving God. He will. He'll awaken you one morning and say, look at this. And you go, I never saw that before. But you never asked before. Because you were so consumed with you knew what that meant. But if you don't know what it meant, it means be honest. Proverbs 9 verses 11 through 12 says wisdom. You see this wisdom that pours out when you hate evil? It says wisdom will extend your life. Isn't that amazing? How many of you have a desire to live long and strong, healthy and wealthy? Well, the Bible says the wisdom of God will extend your life. And look at this next portion. Don't miss this next portion making every year more fruitful than the one before. Wisdom does that. But wisdom comes when you hate the evil. So this year could be more profitable than last year if you hate the evil that's in you. Now, how many of you have just already recognized there's some real struggles in your own life you need to overcome? Just identify before Jesus. Raise your hand and say, all right, I'm afraid, I'm fearful, I'm angry, I'm lustful, uh, I have hatred in my heart. Uh, you, you, you know. So if wisdom is poured out on you, your life will be extended because now you hate evil. This year will be more fruitful than next year, last year, because you hate evil. So it's an advantage to you to be wise. <laughs> say, say this with me. It's to my advantage to be wise. So wisdom, the wisdom of God, listen to me. The wisdom of God is intelligent. All right, that's simple, isn't it? Come on, think about it. The wisdom of God is intelligent. All right, that, that, that takes rocket science to write that down, right? The wisdom of God is intelligent. Everybody agrees with that? So the wisdom of God is intelligent. And he has at his disposal living understanding to devise a plan for your life. So if he's intelligent, he knows how to get you where you got to go. And where I got to go is going to be dependent on my willingness to hate evil. Now it's easy to point out somebody else's evil. But what about your arrogance and your pride? Why don't you see that? Why don't you see how much you talk about yourself and lift yourself up and brag about yourself instead of bragging about Jesus? Oh, I, I'm, I know. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have gone there. That's a little offensive. So let's just move on. But listen, how many of you want to get a better outcome to this year than what you did last year? So repenting from evil places you on the highway of holiness. Repentance starts the travel on the highway of holiness. And it is your job to protect purity. And when you protect purity, you protect your life. How many of you want to travel the highway of holiness? Then you got to repent. In other words, place your life on the altar of God and say, change me. And wait for the fire because it's coming. Hallelujah. So let's look at this. We looked at this last week. Repentance, then, is the foundation of a new outpouring. It's the turning point. Repentance is when you recognize that Jesus has to be the center point of your life, the focus point of your future, your life. So repentance now conditions the heart to the heartbeat of God. Remember, I lay out my life so that he can have me in my brokenness, in my anger, in my frustration, in my ownership of highways, in my frustration of waiters who don't wait. If I lay it all out before him, then his fire will come and consume it. And when I begin to hate these things, I'm going to grow up. And then I'm going to reflect Jesus 
on a higher level. But that ought to be the goal for every one of us in this house. So let's go back to this statement that we're trying to really enforce today. Operating in the light is wisdom pouring into you as you hate every evil form of anything in your life. All right. So let's make this point. All personal insight of the wisdom of God can be trusted. So when, when Holy Ghost, whether it's through your spouse, your best friend, or just with Jesus on his own, identifies shortcomings in your life, you can trust it. But that takes another level of trust to identify that I'm getting corrected and I cannot correct back. I got to take my medicine. That's called operating in the light. You think that ever happened to anybody in the New Testament? Yeah, of course. We read this last week, but I'll, I'll bring it to your attention again because sometimes we hit these things and we go through them too fast. Acts chapter 26, verses 15 and 16. We're going to talk about Saul just for a moment. And Saul now has been persecuting the church. He felt like he was doing the will of God. He was in the will of God, but God showed up, knocked him off of his high horse. Knocked him out of his pride, his arrogance, his self-control. And he says, Paul saying, Who art thou, Lord? And he says, it is I, Jesus, the one you persecute. In other words, my evil works against Christ in me. My frailties and faults work against divine outcome. But look how Jesus responds to my frailty and my, 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 my shortcomings. This is what he says. You persecute me. But rise up. Stand to your feet. For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee. I've appeared to you today. I'm correcting you today because I have an outcome. I have this purpose, to make you. I'm revealing the shortcomings in your life to make you. I'm pointing out the darkness in your life to pull you up to another level. Do you understand? Repentance is nothing bad. It's a sucking up to another level. And he says, I've called you to be a minister. I've called you to be a witness of the things that you are seeing and the things that you're going to see. So that means there's a future for all of us that there are things that God has revealed to you, but there are things that God's going to reveal to you, and the revealing of the things you've seen and the things you're going to see are to be witness to a world because the world will never know unless God has a witness, and that's what we're called to do. Be a witness of the things we've seen and the things yet to be seen, and that's what he's making. He's making every one of us a witness. But that witness is going to be formed out of repentance. So this is where I call God breaking into human history. So God with his mighty hand sweeps away my cobwebs. So that I know now everything that I believe is dear, I find out whether or not they're dear to him. See, I can hold things in my life that I believe are dear and true. Then God the Father says... With one sweep of his hands, he knocks that cobweb system out. And now I can see that that really wasn't dear to him. Now I have a choice. Will I choose what's dear to me or dear to him? Ultimately, if I choose what's dear to him, it'll be dear to me. See, in the beginning, it may not be dear to you. But if you choose what's dear to him... It'll become dear to you. So this brings us to where we should be at in 2021. It's called prayer. You can't have prayer and repentance without each other. It's like a hand in a glove. But I want prayer to be identified as this. It's synchronizing your life with God's normal. 
I talk to myself. I begin to find myself, listen, that, um, look, the, the life I live is no different than your life. So last night I was laying in bed, and I had an itch on my arm, and I rubbed my arm, and I felt a bump right there. And, that, and all of a sudden, the devil says, oh, you got a bump on your arm. You know what that is, huh? And I said, and I had to say to myself, because all of a sudden, that seed wanted to get planted in my heart. I had to say to myself, no, you will not conceive that thought. You don't have to receive every thought that comes into you. Every attack that comes your way. No, I'm not doing that. And the moment I made a decision not to receive that, that thing went away. I fell asleep. But I know that my past is that when I don't synchronize my life with his life, I'm up all night. Because I get worried. So I want to show you this. Let's make this a confession of faith for 2021. You can write this down if you'd like to. Yeah, I think it's just, I think for me, it just jumped off my study notes. Something for you to say. He's coming to make things right and to do it fair and square. And everyone will see that he does all things well. Amen. So what is that about? Well, it's about me. It's about you. It's about us. It's about the plurality of the church. He's coming. And he's coming to make everything's right. And he's going to do it fair and square. And everyone will see it. Praise God. Say, why is that significant? Because if they don't see a change, and if they don't see the significant change in life, then why do they want to follow the God you serve when he does nothing for you? So here's a foundational scripture you may consider. Proverbs 25 verse 2 says this, God conceals the revelation of his word in the hiding place of his glory. So there's revelation, insight to my present and my future, but it's hidden, not from me, but for me. The question is, Am I hungry enough to go get it? But it's in the hiding place of his glory. And the honor of kings is revealed by how thoroughly they search out the deeper meanings of all that God says. Really, your hunger is your honor. The hunger for deeper things from God is called your honor. So I don't know that this is in your notes, but I want to give you this thought. So please pay attention. This should be all of our attitude for 2021. I'll dig deeper to find a pleasant pool where others find pain only. Let me say it again. I'll dig deeper to find a pleasant pool where others only find pain. See, repentance is painful for some people. But for the believer who understands the outcome of God catching your heart on fire, I'll dig deeper. To find that pool of pleasure when others complain of the pain. So with that thought, then you'll understand this. There's no end to the discovery of the greatness that surrounds Jesus. There's no end. So just keep digging. Keep digging. Keep digging till you get to bed bedrock. I don't know about you guys, but I like watching, um, you know, this, uh, the gold show where they're digging for bedrock. Because nothing can go deeper than that. So I'm asking you, let's go to bedrock this year. Amen. Psalms 145 verse 18. Is everybody still with me? Amen. The Lord is near to everyone who prays. The Lord is near to everyone who synchronizes 
their life with his normal. The Lord is near to every faithful person who prays to him. He's faithful. Jesus is always near to those who call out to him. He listens closely, especially when your hearts are true. If your hearts are real and you cry out and out of brokenness, oh God of heaven, I can't do this. I need your help. That heart captures his attention. So let me close with one scripture and then we'll, we'll land this. this um, let's go to Exodus chapter 20. I want to show you this. And then perhaps we'll build off of this next week. We'll see how the Lord directs us. So Moses in his day was a spiritual leader, but he was also a form of prophetic insight. So Moses says unto the people, Fear not, for God has come to prove you. Or in other words, God has come to reveal your true passions. The things that really stir your life. God has come to reveal who you are. That his purpose would be the outcome. That you would fear his face. And that you would not sin. And the people stood afar off. In other words, there was no pressing to his presence. But Moses drew near into the thick darkness of the unknown to the normal. Moses was courageous enough to go into the presence of God when everybody else was unwilling to go. And I'm asking you today to let's not be the people who stand afar off. Let's be like Moses today who say, I don't know what's behind that dark veil right there of invitation to come into him. I don't know what's there because I have to face all the injustices of my life. That's the darkness. It's me, my injustices, but I got to deal with it because if I do, if I press into that darkness where he is, I'm going to step over into the light. Let's think.